Polerina Home Show. Uh, we are today uh, with uh, Matthijs uh, Biermann from uh, Gekotec. Hi, Matthijs. Hi, Simone. So, um, Matthijs, he completed a master's degree in ICT in business at the University of Leiden. And after years of working as a Java software developer, he uh, joined uh, Gekotec early on in uh, 2012. And he's currently the CTO of uh, Gekotec. Um, so uh, Gekotec, just to have a, a small introduction about the company, uh, he's, uh, so it's, um, it's a company that assists innovative organizations with the uh, implementation of novel uh, IT ideas. Uh, so they use a sort of agile approach to software development, uh, focusing on uh, early release and continuous development and improvement. And their services uh, span from uh, entire software development cycles, from initial requirements analysis and planning with the client to design, execute, test, release, and maintain uh, software uh, solutions. Um, so they are uh, they have a wide array of projects, and uh, within AAA, we know they are uh, specifically taking over uh, the. Um, the role of developing our platform, especially when it comes to the core engine uh, that is indeed a gamified um, element. So we're going to have a discussion with Matthijs to understand a little bit better uh, what it means gamification, what uh, gamified elements uh, are, what, uh, what are the, the key uh, benefits of having uh, gamified elements uh, in some of our parts. Uh, uh, and, and also important elements uh, such as the build-up skill advisory app, and maybe we can go uh, a little bit uh, into the detail. Um, so Matthijs, uh, how long have you been involved in uh, Horizon 2020 projects? And um, so we read that you at uh, Gekotec, you have several projects, um, but uh, it would be interesting to understand uh, what do you think about uh, Horizon 2020 project in the, in the specific case, and um, how do these uh, differ from like uh, normal projects that you are involved with more on the business level? All right, well, uh, AAA Reno is actually our first H2020 project where we're a project partner. Uh, like you said, we've worked on the Build Up Skills Advisor app before, and we've, we've also now built the backend that feeds a lot of the functionality of the app. Uh, and it's it's starting to expand a bit beyond uh, the app itself. Uh, we're, we're doing mobile sites. Uh, you can find craftsmen, uh, see see where services are provided uh, using geolocation. So we're we're expanding a bit there. Uh, but for all of those, uh, we were subcontractors. We've worked very closely with uh, Jan from ISO. Uh, on, on the Build Up Skills Advisor app and on these additional functionalities. But AAA Reno is our first uh, H2020 project where we're uh, a, a project partner and we're getting to see the full scope of what a H2020 project looks like. Uh, for us, it's, it is indeed very different from what we usually do. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of different clients, uh, but most of our clients uh, could be characterized either as startups um, or their, say, large corporate clients. Um, but, but in any case, we're very used to, say, smaller release cycles, uh, shorter projects, and um, yeah, maybe also shorter deadlines. Um, but then the scope of the projects are usually also a bit smaller. Uh, another big difference between what we're doing in age 2020 and what we're doing with most of the startups is that the, the startup owners usually have a very concrete vision of what their product should look like, uh, even down to the level where they'll, they'll mock up their own screens in uh, PowerPoints uh, or, or other tools. And then we mostly enter into a discussion uh, on, on why that could work or how it could be done differently. Whereas in the AAA Reno project, it's more of a strategic vision, which we then need to translate all the way down into actual working software. So that's uh, uh, it's 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 an interesting challenge for us. It is it is very interesting, and indeed um, uh, we see the different um, 
contribution to this uh, software development and uh, for, for us it was the first time in this process but we realized how complex it is uh, in, in, as a matter of fact. But so you mentioned you have several projects uh, but talking about Triple Arena specifically, um, why, uh, why a company that has business and of course has interest in, in R&D uh, decides to, um, to work uh, within uh, the Horizon 2020 scheme. So uh, we can imagine this is like challenging, but also quite unknown. Uh, of course, there are contributions and uh, European funding, but what it's, um, what's the reason uh, behind uh, participation to uh, an Horizon 2020 project? So what's the added value to, um, to a company such as uh, Kekotak? Well, for us as a company, uh, it's 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 not a, a purely commercial decision. Uh, let's let's put it that way. Uh, we like that there is a, a an edge to it of doing something that is socially responsible and uh, environmentally environmentally friendly. Uh, we've we've done a few very small uh, projects on the side uh, for. Um, what do you call them? Uh, basically, good causes. Um, but we we usually do well. Like I said, lot larger projects for for startups uh, and and or just big corporates, uh, where most of the targets are about eventually making some money. Although I have to say that a lot of the startups also have a vision where uh, it's it's not purely financially motivated. Yeah, and but, also but the point it's 2020. It's 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 mostly to be able to do something in that space uh, and also uh, tangibly to do some interesting technical work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And as a matter of fact, we saw that uh, in Triple Arena, the contribution of um, uh, SMEs together with research institutes uh, worked quite well because it really gives a sort of environment to research and to think about. Uh, deployment and solution, but with a, a little bit more relaxed environment compared to the tight deadlines that you have when it comes to yeah, purely business-driven projects. And that's probably where the added value of uh, R&D uh, stands, right, for in this in this Horizon 2020 concept and, and concept and you know, environment. But um, Talking about the, the scope of Triple Arena and the platform, which is renovations, like home renovations, um, what what are, uh, in your opinion, because of course you come to uh, come from a different perspective, um, so you're not uh, an expert of home renovations, but you had to uh, become somehow uh, acquainted to that. Uh, what's your opinion as software developer or more ICT person, the main barriers for uh, developing, for instance, tools to support uh, more affordable, more attractive and acceptable home renovations? I think one of the challenges is uh, bringing the different actors and, and organizations together. Uh, you're, you're dealing with, well, many groups, uh, but the most important ones, obviously, are uh, homeowners, uh, sometimes tenants. And then you have the housing corporations uh, and you have governments. And all of these parties, they all have an interest uh, and most of them want to do these renovations. Uh, so their, their interests are mostly aligned, but still it seems very hard to get things started. And I'd, I'd hope that the AAA Reno platform, together with the support from the partners and all of the, the trickling down of, of small nudges and incentives, would be able to bring all of these parties together to, to get things started, to start doing things. Uh, yeah. And I think that is, so most challenges, uh, to be honest, are not of a technical nature. Uh, building a platform where you connect everybody, it to be honest, it's not that hard. Uh, we, we do it all the time. Uh, very often, the, the hardest thing to do is to make sure that the platform gets used. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And if you look at the data these days, uh, well, of course, we are now in this corona time, but we really realize how much digital platform really uh, revolutionized the way we, we can live these days. And uh, we see the numbers, like for instance, 
team uh, teams usage uh, or zoom platform skyrocketed uh, like plus 3000 percent it's like numbers are incredible and I keep on growing so we 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 knew it before that we were living in an area of uh, digitalization but it's getting even more important nowadays uh, so how do you foresee also because of new way of living that uh, we are forced to have. How do you foresee, for instance, uh, a future in which renovations or maybe part of this home renovation can be uh, fully designed through digital platforms uh, uh, when people are comfortably sitting on their couch? Oh, I definitely think that is the future. Uh, if, you, if you compare it to things like shopping from home, uh, a, a lot of people 10 years back said, no, people are never going to do their, their daily groceries online. Um, and it's it's happening now all over and it's accelerated due to Corona. But a lot of people are ordering their uh, groceries online. I don't think they're going to stop uh, once the crisis is over. And uh, but a lot of things um, that people said would never happen online. And buying a car online, look, look at what Tesla is doing. They're selling cars online. People buy a very expensive thing and they do it online with a few clicks uh, it's it's going to happen and it's going to happen with everything so i think for renovation too uh, what's going to happen is that you are going to get these platforms online uh, where you can interact with the service providers maybe even a financial institution to finance it and then uh, you'd be able to either get it as a full service or get very involved. Uh, I, I think there's going to be very different levels for different people. Some people are interested and they, they want to know everything about the, the heat pump they're installing or the type solar panel. And they're interested in, in getting a 360 watt panel instead of a 300 watt panel. And other people are just really not so interested and just go, well, I want to improve my house. Uh, tell, tell me what to do. Yeah. And yes, I think I think it's going to happen online, uh, and it's it's going to be cheaper to do it that way. Yeah, yeah, and then I think another very important element that sums up to the concept of digitalization is, of course, um, well, the possibility to make it. Uh, user-centered to make it tailored uh, and that is of course something that you can support uh, uh, can be supported by data and uh, uh, we see for instance how uh, behavioral based decisions uh, really took over in, in a good and in a bad way right in our society uh, but definitely uh, behavioral science and uh, more social aspects related to uh, consumers behavior really play a very important role uh, but then it comes comes also the concept of gamification. So we don't really just want to uh, increase user awareness or use like uh, behavioral insights to uh, to drive people's decisions, uh, but we want to we want well we want to leverage this knowledge to make it uh, indeed more user centered and tailored. Um, so we know a lot about user experience design uh, or user experience in general, but then gamification is something uh, that adds on top and, it, uh, and it's very interesting. Can you tell us a little bit more about gamification in general? Because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a word that is in the mouth of everyone right now, but we don't want to be uh, uh, on a gray area. So um, maybe yes, we can... Sir. Everybody has their own definition, uh, but the, the definition I, uh, I usually look to is that gamification is the application of game elements to a non-game setting. So when you're when you're designing your house, you're not actually, uh, or you're designing renovation, you're not actually playing a game. But what you could do is add elements from games, like like having points or scores, or uh, maybe an element of competition from gaming that makes it a bit more fun. And uh, it, it's permeated all of the uh, the digital things you do. Just just look at your your check-ins for Square started with badges, and uh, right. of course, Facebook is doing it. And e even something basic as a thumbs up could be considered a gamification element because it it could say, well, how many likes do you have, and that already makes it a gamified experience. So it's it's a very broad range of things you can do. Uh, but at the same time, I think you have to do it in a responsible way uh, because a lot of companies are now uh, trying to, of course, companies like Facebook who are 
trying to get screen time from users. Basically, they're they're selling eyeballs to their uh, their advertisers. Uh, they they employ these techniques to the extremes in order to keep people in, um, and and that's taking it too far. So you you want a bit of a balanced platform where you you nudge people and you make it fun, uh, but you you don't build something that's addictive. Right, and it's also very interesting to see how people react differently when it comes to providing data. Uh, so uh, we are all very concerned when it comes to uh, privacy and ethics in, in dealing with private data, personal data. But at the same time, we're so eager to give out or give away our data when it comes to play around. So uh, that's also something that as a matter of fact, in AAA, you know, we are taking into consideration uh, how to be respectful of people's privacy and uh, to comply with GDPR and ethics. So uh, that's also something we've uh, we've learned uh, to do. Um, but talking about lesson learned, uh, can you tell us uh, what are for you, in your opinion, the, the key lessons that you've learned so far in these two years we've worked together on AAA, you know? Yes, it's 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 definitely that the the, uh, the the breadth and the number of parties involved uh, and the complications that arise from from having so many parties and, and slightly different um, interests makes makes it so hard to design a platform that that caters to all. Uh, when you think about renovations, you, you tend to think about them from a mindset that. Is very personal so uh, if you're a homeowner you think as a homeowner what would i do uh, if you're a tenant if you're renting then uh, of course you have a very different view you, you think about what should the homeowner uh, what should the owner of my building do and then already you get a very different uh, view um, on the uh, on the renovation i think for, from all of the discussion with the partners the, the biggest takeaway for me was uh, there are so many different partners involved, and it's it's so complex to make everybody happy. That is a, a big challenge. It is. Uh, a big and challenge. another thing is that 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 was coming from from ISO, uh, who gave us a bit of insight into the technical solutions. Uh, I started out with uh, well, making things energy efficient. It means just isolation and maybe some solar panels. Uh, that's the thing that everybody knows, uh, but then you learn there are many, many, many more measures and technical solutions available uh, that I had never heard from. So the, just the breadth of what's available, um, that, mm -hmm. that's yeah something we learned. And also the important contribution that projects like uh, AAA Vino can give to uh, innovative companies like yours. Uh, that uh, indeed already works on uh, top-notch solutions, but you always get something new to learn. So that's and that's vice versa. We've learned so much about uh, gamification and gamified elements from from you and your side. So again, it's those deaths, and uh, that's probably the also from my side the the biggest uh, take on, on this type of project that are multidisciplinary and uh, it's a sort of pool of knowledge that comes together that um, somehow, somehow summing up to the extent that uh, the, the single units are not uh, quantified not quantified as um, uh, yeah, individual assets, but it really br brings an added value. Um, I really want to thank you for this chat that we're having, but before letting you go, I wanted to conclude with a, you know, a message of hope. I think everyone needs this uh, during this time. Well, if you could imagine a base case scenario for uh, AAA Reno, for renovation platforms in general, what would be your hope? What would be your dream? <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, the dream wild. Well, it, it would be that uh, we, we actually become a strong driver in meeting the H2020 goals. So that means that across Europe, the platform would be used to start and finish and monitor many renovations, making Europe uh, one of the first continents where we're actually becoming completely self-sustainable. Yeah, that's a big dream. And that yeah. is a very dream, I know. <laughs> but we are, we're there to hope big. 
so, well, again, I thank you, uh, Matthijs, for this uh, short uh, interview. Uh, we're going to upload this on uh, our YouTube channel together with uh, the other interviews. Uh, if you have questions uh, that you would like to ask to Matthijs, you can comment on the video and we're always happy to, you know, give a, a response. And uh, follow the Triple Arena website and follow the updates of the project. And again, thank you, Matthijs, for this time. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Right. I hope to see you soon. Bye. -bye.